Chapter 4, Part A. Common Reactions and Potential Serious Adverse Events Following Smallpox Vaccination with Dr. Brett Peterson. In Chapter 4 of this training video, we will describe the common reactions and potential serious adverse events following vaccination and the available treatment. ACAM 2000 has been evaluated for safety in 2,983 subjects who received ACAM 2000 in six clinical trials. Overall, these trials showed that ACAM 2000 was well tolerated and less reactogenic than older smallpox replication competent vaccines such as Dryvax. Adverse events associated with ACAM 2000 were generally predictable and manageable with the incidence higher among primary vaccinees than previously vaccinated subjects. No deaths were reported and serious adverse events following vaccination were less than 1%. Assessment of risks and benefits must be conducted when deciding whether to vaccinate an individual with ACAM 2000, especially for those individuals who have a higher risk for experiencing a serious adverse event. However, the risk-benefit profile will differ depending on if a smallpox emergency is in effect versus if there is no smallpox emergency in effect. Report any adverse events with ACAM 2000 to the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System, or VAERS. The most common reactions following ACAM 2000 vaccination during the clinical trials were mild to moderate vaccination site reactions such as pruritus, erythema, pain, and swelling at the site, lymph node enlargement and tenderness, usually on the same side where the vaccination had occurred, constitutional flu-like symptoms such as fever, malaise, myalgia, headaches, rigors, or feeling hot, and mild gastrointestinal symptoms such as nausea and diarrhea. These common reactions were generally self-limited. The most common serious adverse events reported following ACAM 2000 vaccination were suspected or probable myocarditis and pericarditis in subjects who received ACAM 2000 for the first time, resulting in an estimated incidence of 5.7 events per thousand vaccinations. None of the subjects had confirmed myocarditis or pericarditis and none of these events occurred among previously vaccinated subjects. Other serious cardiac events reported include single reports of atrial fibrillation, chest discomfort, and chest pain that may have been associated with ACAM 2000 among three previously vaccinated subjects. One primary vaccinee did experience a new onset of seizure eight days after vaccination. However, predisposing factors were contributory. All serious adverse events resolved without permanent sequelae. Five subjects were also identified to be pregnant 30 days after ACAM 2000 vaccination. There were no reports of fetal vaccinia, congenital anomalies, or birth defects following delivery. Post-licensure monitoring for these serious adverse events after ACAM 2000 vaccination remains ongoing. Because ACAM 2000 is derived from the same New York City Board of Health strain used to manufacture other older smallpox vaccines such as Dryvax, and historically serious adverse events have occurred following vaccination with these older smallpox vaccines, it is anticipated that the safety profile of ACAM 2000 is probably similar. Thus, historical data regarding serious adverse events following smallpox vaccination during the era of routine smallpox vaccination in 1968 and from the 2000 to 2005 military and civilian smallpox vaccination program are briefly summarized here. Serious adverse events that have occurred following smallpox vaccination have included myocarditis, pericarditis, post-vaccinial encephalitis, eczema vaccinatum, progressive vaccinia, generalized vaccinia, severe vaccinial skin infections, erythema multiforme major, including Stevens-Johnson syndrome, fetal vaccinia, and fetal death, and ocular complications such as keratitis, corneal scarring and blindness, and inadvertent inoculation that resulted in severe complications in non-vaccinated contacts. The risks of these serious adverse events, which may result in severe disability, permanent neurological sequelae, and or death, might be increased in individuals with certain conditions, such as cardiac disease, 
eye disease being treated with topical steroids, immunodeficiency, eczema, or chronic exfoliative skin conditions, and in young children or pregnant women. During routine vaccinations with older smallpox vaccines in the 1960s, myocarditis and pericarditis were not commonly reported following vaccination. However, these events emerged with increased frequency during the 2002 to 2005 military and civilian vaccination campaign of over 770,000 vaccinees. The pathophysiology of this complication remains unknown given the absence of viral damage in the histopathology examination of myocardial tissue of those with myocarditis. Enhanced surveillance and better diagnostic testing probably played a role in the increase of cases reported. Other cardiac adverse events, such as ischemic cardiac events and non-ischemic dilated cardiomyopathy, were also reported during the vaccination campaign. The incidence of these complications does not appear to significantly exceed expected background rates, and there's currently no evidence to suggest a causal association of smallpox vaccination with cardiac ischemia or myocardial infarction.